To the latest on the war in Ukraine, tonight innocent civilians are trapped in the country as Russian shelling halts evacuations. And a Russian plane that landed in New York today is on its way back to Moscow with expelled diplomats. CBS 2's Lisa Rosner joins us with the new information. Lisa? Yeah, Jessica, nearly 50 Russian diplomats, including their family members, left on that plane at the request of U.S. reps to the U.N., those reps alleging that they were involved in activities not in a accordance with responsibilities of diplomats. This all comes as the U.S. and Europe have started preliminary talks about how they will support Ukraine if the country's president and his aides have to flee. For seven days, the Kyiv suburb of Irpin has been pummeled by Russian strikes. You can see it in the faces of those leaving, among the more than 1.5 million refugees that the UN says has fled Ukraine since the Russian invasion began. Our family was basically torn apart because I had to leave my parents and my husband at home. And I hope that when this is over, and I hope this is over soon, we'll still have a home to go back to. U.S. officials say Russian forces are trying to encircle several cities, including Kyiv, Kharkiv, and Mariupol. In the port city of Mariupol, injured residents and servicemen have been pouring into a hospital. Women are on the floor of a shelter trying to stay safe. Plumes of smoke could be seen rising from a warehouse hit by shelling in Stoyanka, half a mile from Kyiv. In this village, 15 miles south, a man digs through the rubble after losing five family members. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia is threatening to bomb the key port city of Odessa. A senior U.S. defense official says Russia has fired 600 missiles and has committed approximately 95 percent of its amassed combat power inside Ukraine. Former U.S. Ambassador to NATO Kurt Volker says he thinks a no-fly zone over Ukraine is positive, despite calls from many, including President Biden and NATO, to avoid it. We limit the scope geographically to Kyiv and western Ukraine, so we're not getting close to Russian borders. We make clear that we will only fire if fired upon. American officials Sunday identified three areas where the U.S. could soon take action. A ban on Russian oil imports, a declaration of war crimes against Russia, and help facilitating delivery of Polish fighter jets to Ukraine. A day after speaking with President Zelensky, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called on the Biden administration administration to work with Eastern European allies to help. Schumer also hopes a $10 billion package that has humanitarian and defense aid is passed by Congress as soon as this week. Meanwhile, Ukraine and Russia have a third round of negotiations tomorrow. Jessica.